So if we examine the expressions for uh, carryouts at different bit positions, we start to see patterns. For example, the last term in every carry expression contains carry in as well as only propagates. So it doesn't contain any generates. Whereas all the terms before it contain generate bits as well as propagate bits, but not carry in. So if we look at the first bit position, we find that C0 is equal to G0 plus P0 Cn, which means that it is going to be true if the current bit position G0 uh, is generating or if there was a carry in equal to 1 and the current position is propagating. Now, when we examine C1, we find that carry 1 is equal to 1 if the current bit position is generating, which is G1, or if, it, if the previous bit position G0 was generating and the current bit position allows this generated bit to be propagated to the outside. Or if there was a carry in and that carry in was allowed to propagate through both bit positions. And if we consider the third term, the third uh, carry out C2, we find that the last term again deals with the probability that we have a carry in and this is allowed to propagate through the entire uh, uh, range of bits. Whereas the first three terms deal with the possibility of anything within that range generating and then that generated bit being allowed to propagate to the outside. Now this starts to give us a, uh, a pattern that allows us to restate uh, carry outs in terms of something called group generate and group propagate. If we define group generate and group propagate and then figure out how these group generates and propagates can be uh, processed, this allows us to start designing some of the fastest adders available. Now, group propagates are easier to visualize and easier to understand. If we look, for example, at C3, then this product, P0, P1, P2, P3, is called the group propagate for the range from 0 to 3. So P0 up to 3 is equal to the product of everything between these two numbers, 0 and 3. Similarly, this is group propagate P0 to 2, and this is group propagate from 0 to 1. So what is group propagate? Group propagate simply means that the range of, of bit positions that you are describing is all propagating. So this could actually work on any range. It doesn't have to start at 0. So for example, if we uh, want to uh, write down P3 to 6, for example, this would be P3, P4, P5, and P6. So it is simply the product of all the propagates between whatever x and y is. So it's going to be px, px plus 1, and so on until py. So group propagate acts on a range, and it indicates that that whole range of, of bit positions is bypassing or propagating. So basically, if you have a carry in coming from whatever, and you have a group propagate from x to y, then if this group propagate is 1, then carry in is going to go out to carry out uh, and bypass everything in the middle. This is very similar to the uh, select line of the multiplexer in carry bypass adders, for example. Now, group generate is a little bit harder to uh, understand mathematically and conceptually. Uh, so for bit position C0, uh, uh, we only have G0, so that's the, the generate we have there. And for uh, bit position 1, we have uh, these two terms giving us the group generate for the range from 0 to 1. So for the range from 0 to 1, we already figured out what the group propagate is, which is P01. Uh, the group generate G0 0 to 1 is G1 plus P1 G0. So basically, the group generate is the remainder term of whatever uh, is remaining outside the group propagate term. So uh, the most complicated is probably uh, G0 to 3 for C3, which is going to be equal to G3 plus P3 G2 plus P3 P2 G1 plus P3 P2 P1 G0. So uh, what does this mean? What does this whole term mean? It just means that within the range of bits from 0 to 3, some bit position, 
one of the bit positions, or perhaps more than one, but at least one, is generating a carryout. And that carryout has enough propagates active so that it can show, out, show at the output. So that could be G3, and it doesn't need any additional uh, propagates because it is already at the end of the range. But if it is G2, then it needs P3 to be also equal to 1 so that it can propagate and show up at the output, and so on. So when we have uh, G X to Y, all that means is uh, that there is a bit within the range X to Y, which is generating a carry out, and that there are enough propagates to allow that bit uh, generated bit to uh, propagate to the output. So uh, the carry at any position X is obviously going to be G naught to X plus P naught to X carry in. So um, the carry at bit position X is going to be one if there's anything within the range from zero to X that is generating and whose generated bit is allowed to propagate to the output or if we are simply bypassing the whole thing with a group propagate. We can even define something uh, reasonable for um, uh, for what group propagate and generate mean for uh, ranges that do not begin at zero. So, for example, uh, carry five is going to be equal to um, generate from um, let's say from three to five plus uh, carry two times p from three to five. So we don't even actually have to start at zero. A carry being active at bit position 5 means that there is a carry coming in from bit position 2 that manages to propagate to the output, or that there is a generated bit within the range from 3 to 5, which is the remaining range, which also manages to propagate to the output. So now what? how do we calculate uh, group generates and group propagates? Uh, group propagate is actually pretty easy to calculate because it's the product, and group generate has this expression, so it's a little bit more complicated. Um, what makes sense, though, is to define an operator that acts on ranges of group generates and group propagates and generates and produces outputs that are uh, of wider range. That operator is called the dot operator, and it's usually written as a dot. And what it does is it acts on a generate, a group generate uh, from x to y, and a group propagate from x to y, and another group generate and a group propagate from, um, let's say, z uh, to uh, w, and propagate z to w. And it produces a new group generate and a new gro group propagate. So what does it do? It combines the ranges to produce longer ranges, meaning that if z is equal to y plus 1, then it extends the range. So it's, this is best seen using an example. Let's say, for example, that we have a group generate from 2 to 3 and group propagate from 2 to 3. And we process them using the dot operator with generate from 4 to 6 and propagate from 4 to 6. What this is going to produce is generate from 2 to 6 and propagate from 2 to 6. So it's simply combines ranges to produce longer ranges. So what is this operator? What does it do? What is the actual circuit that implements it? It's actually uh, pretty simple to see if you consider C0, the expressions for C0 and C1. Um, so C1 is simply the combination of uh, bit position 0 and bit position 1. So C1 is actually... Um, just the result of doing the, the, the dot operator on 0 and 1. And so we find that the generate, the new generate, is equal to the old generates combined this way and the old propagates combined this way. So that in this case, P2 to 6 is going to be equal to P2 to 3 multiplied by P4 to 6. And this is by induction, just by looking at the expression of uh, C1. Similarly, G2 to 6 is going to be equal to g4 to 6 plus g2 to 3 multiplied by p4 to 6. So the dot operator can act on any range. The ranges have to, do not have to be of equal uh, length. 
So it can combine ranges with unequal length. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it, uh, if it acts on ranges uh, that have overlaps or that are just, um, just right, like this range. So this range ends at 3, and this one starts at 4. Let's say that it was actually uh, acting on uh, the range uh, 2 to 4 and the range 3 to 6. It would produce the exact same results, so it produces the result, uh, the range 2 to 6. So it doesn't really matter if it acts on ranges with, uh, with overlaps. It will still work and it will work exactly the same. Uh, what does it do when it works on ranges that uh, have gaps? So, for example, let's say it acts on the range 1 to 2 and the range uh, 4 to 6. Uh, in that case, it just produces rubbish. It doesn't produce something uh, useful or meaningful. It's important to notice that the dot operator is not commutative, which means that the order of operands is important. Uh, this is particularly because the group generate that, that results from the dot operator acts asymmetrically on the first and the second uh, operands. So it uses the group propagate of the second operand and it leaves the group generate of the second operand alone. And so it really matters how you order the operands for the dot operator. How is the dot operator implemented in CMOS? It's actually two CMOS gates. The first is the uh, gate that produces the resultant uh, group propagate, which is simply going to be an AND gate. Uh, and the second is a sum of products, which uh, gives you the group generate.